I'm delighted to welcome you to our press night for Late Night Staring at High Res Pixels, a series of asides by Athena Stevens. I'm Sarah Laurie, and I've produced the series for Aegis Productions in association with Neil McPherson for the Finnborough Theatre. Late Night Staring at High Res Pixels is a new play repurposed for online viewing, which was streamed daily on the Finnborough Theatre's YouTube channel throughout February and with subtitles by a theme saver. The full series is now available to view until the 31st of March. Links to both playlists with and without subtitles will appear now in the chat and will remain there for the next hour. Written by and starring Athena Stevens with Evelyn Lockley, the series was presented as part of the Finborough Theatre's Finborough for Free original online content programme, new for every month during 2021. The series was directed remotely via Zoom and filmed on an iPad on location in the performers' homes. It is brought to you by the creative team behind Athena's 2020 play, Scrounger. Director, Lily McLeish. Designer, Anna Reed, Lighting designer, Anthony Duran. And sound designer and composer, Julian Starr. All of whom are here tonight to answer questions, with the exception of Julian, who is in Australia. So um, in a minute, I'm going to share the first episode, the first of 28. As I say, the full playlists are available in the chat for you to watch at your leisure. We're really excited that tonight's uh, Q&A will be moderated by Shravani Sen OBE. Shravani has had an extensive leadership career in the not-for-profit sector, focusing on issues affecting children and young people. She has been the CEO of three organisations and has more than 25 years board leadership experience. In summer 2020, Shrabani took on her fourth chair role at Action Aid UK, an international development charity that specialises in working with women and girls. One of Action Aid's key areas of work is combating violence against women and girls. Central to all Action Aid does is putting power into the hands of women and girls. Shrabani also chairs children and young people's charity, The Winch, and is founder and CEO of Full Colour, which works to achieve systemic change around diversity and inclusion. Shrabani was awarded an OBE for her services to children and families. So you can pop uh, questions for the panel into the Q&A function, and Shrabani will be on top of that. Um, uh, directing them to the relevant people on the panel. Just to reiterate, the panel tonight is Director Lily McLeish, um, both performers, Athena and uh, Evelyn, Athena who also writes, and our design team, Anna Reed and Anthony Duran. Um, and any questions about the sound design, I'm sure um, Lily will be able to, to manage those in um, Julian's absence. Two women, one photograph. A young woman sends a topless selfie to her boyfriend as a bit of flirtatious fun. When he shows it to his best friend for a laugh, he can't imagine her having any other reaction. But what starts out as a joke soon turns into an accusation of something much darker. Late Night Staring at High Res Pixels explores the issue of assumed consent and how it contributes to a culture of complicity and control towards women. It is very meaningful to us that a raft of new amendments to the Domestic Abuse Bill will be presented this week, announced today, providing greater protections for victims and further clamping down on perpetrators. So-called revenge porn laws will be widened to include threats to disclose intimate images with the intention to cause distress. Good. 
I know I look good. And if I think about it long enough, I know I'm not going to look any better than I do today because, you know, vanity. Very much stress. I don't feel it now, but other women tell me that it's coming. My mother, aunties, friends, sisters. The images that pop up on my phone when I pull it out of my pocket. I see the soft creases of age slowly make their way over my face at the end of the day if I forget to put moisturiser on. I know what's coming. I try not to let the fact that it is all downhill from here get into my head, but that is the reality that keeps coming back. So I take out my phone just to have something to show off, to look back on, to offer myself as proof from the days of seriously self-doubt. This is who I am. This is what I look like. This is how I want everyone else to see me. I pull out the phone, I pull down the shoulder and the top, get the angle just right, get my head tilted just so. Pouty face, duck face, smile. Too much teeth. I hate my teeth when I smile. Readjust to relax. Try again. Click. Take the photo. And take a look. Looks good. But I can do better. dinner at his parents. Everyone keeps looking at us, suggestively. By the time it's open, we're prone to seeing other people. That's clear. Put down, done and dusted. Which is one of the things that makes us being us so easy. He was there when I was done with the uni. There when my parents went Christmases with his family when I can't get back to mine. That's already a given. I like him, but I've seen the way he's treated his past two girlfriends and no thank you. The on, off, on, off the games of backhanded compliments. They are always young and worried about keeping him happy. Side by side, although he's got plenty to say about me, I'm the girl who doesn't bring drama to the table, which is why I'm with this tonight. Not her. I'm the one that can keep up with the politics. No, to follow his mom into the kitchen to help with the washing up. Can say enough to make my opinions known while seeming to agree enough to keep it under the radar that we don't exactly see eye to eye, never will. Also, they like me because I have a job. I've ne never been one of those girls that plans to get a guy and then work everything else out around him. I work in ads. That's not what I wanted to be when I was a kid. I wanted to be a photographer. And I am. But I'm not about to do the whole starving artist thing. 
I was there by my wedding. And I landed a job a few weeks ago that raped it in. My oldest friend, Sean, pulled some strings. A photo editor for one of the big guns. Not one of those cutie social media firms. Who says nepotism is just for the boys, huh? I'm independent. Whatever I see, if I want it, I can buy it with this job. And the fact is, he likes his women small. Needing him a bit too cat for my taste. The truth is, in reality, I know not to push him too hard. The other girls do that. Call him out, push him hard, get ideas and say things which, if I'm honest, he needs to hear. But he never could listen to you. So why stick your neck out for a lost cause? That's why they aren't around for now 18 months and that. He and I have been friends for six years. Best friends, he says. I'm not so sure about that, but he wouldn't like being the favorite. Welcome everyone, just give us a minute while everyone gets to turn their camera on. Well, what an intriguing start to a very fascinating series and I'm delighted to get a chance to, to quiz and ask questions of the creative team behind this incredible project. I'm going to start with you, Athena, as the, as the writer. Um, tell me a bit about why you chose to tell the story this way through a series of, of a, a web series rather than just wait for the theatres to reopen. Yeah, I guess there's three reasons. The first being this creative team likes to create. Um, and we like to tell stories and we were bored and locked down. But I think more than that, um, I think I have spent years not being able to get work in theaters. So I developed my own storytelling skills through the online medium of digital storytelling. And then on top of which, we were in the middle of a time when a lot of people were alone with their thoughts and either they were stuck in isolation or for many women, they didn't realize the person they were in a relationship with. So now seems like a time that the story needed to be told. That's really interesting, Athena. And in fact, you've you very beautifully um, helped me to segue to a question I had uh, for Lily, which is, um, Athena's talked a lot about the um, need to tell stories, the importance of telling stories. 
how do you approach as a director directing stories when actually you can't even get the actors in a room if I've understood it correctly I don't think Evelyn and Athena have actually ever met face to face uh, that's one heck of a challenge tell us how you approach that challenge as a director Lily oh my gosh big question um I mean I think apart from uh, Evie and Athena, everyone on the creative team had indeed worked together before. So I think we were and very used to working together on uh, productions with small budgets and, you know, fast and furious and very, very ambitious ideas within quite sort of tight um, remits and boundaries. And uh, so we kind of have a quite a nice short, a very brilliant shorthand, I think, uh, as a team already. Uh, and there's, you know, the platforms like Zoom do offer quite, um, yeah, technically interesting options, really. And so in a way, it's sort of uh, to exploring what Zoom could offer in terms of helping us shoot a series like this. Um, it, uh, we approached it very much, I think, like we would uh, approach a, a shoot for a film or a series. We storyboarded the entire series and uh, we spent, um, yeah, long, lot, lots of sessions sort of doing recceing in the at performers' houses, sort of feeling a bit like we were trespassing in a way, going, can you point your camera in that corner and what's under the bed there? And can we just sort of, I'm um, sorry, do you mind if we just look into your um, bathroom? And, you know, so it felt quite... Uh, yeah, intrusive at times. And it was sort of, you know, needed a lot of, I think, uh, subtle and very sensitive negotiation, making sure that they were happy to sort of share their beautiful homes with us for this series. Um, yeah, it's sort of, it, yeah, I think that's sort of, yeah. Well, I should have started this off by giving Athena and the team a massive congratulations for recently winning an Offie Award and, uh, you know, big, big, big round of applause. And that that kind of the brilliance of the team really shone through as well as the brilliance of the writing. I have to say it was one of my favourite pieces of theatre that I saw that year when I came uh, came to see it twice. In fact, it was so great. Um, but Lily, um, Anna, Lily talked about the opportunities of Zoom and doing something on Zoom. As the designer, what were the challenges? Because you couldn't just miraculously build a set or decide where things were. You were working with the reality of the actors' houses. What kind of challenges did that give you in, in designing the piece? Yeah, kind of, kind of like what um, Lily said about the restrictions sort of being a really useful place to push against and sort of jump jump off of in, in exactly that way. You know, we've uh, previously made work together in, in very, very difficult or strange circumstances and everyone who work, who's worked on the fringe in London knows the strange and difficult circumstances you can be working in a lot of the time. Uh, so yeah, we more we 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 kind of looked at it and we were like, oh, well, yeah, we can do this. No, <laughs> you know, we can. <laughs> and I think um, I think I was I I think I was uh, we sort of approached it as a site specific piece, and in that way, I mean, part of it was just uh, we were really fortunate that both um, actors had had lovely homes that we were able to film in. That was that was a huge boon. And once we started doing this, we wanted to make each space very particular to that particular character and it just involved a lot of as Lily was saying a lot of wrecking um a lot of preparation but also just like looking around at what we had and you know saying oh the foreground of this shot is a bit bad look around the room you're in do you have anything and so it was very collaborative like the you know the performers were throwing in stuff you know um Anne and Lily were just as much involved in this as designers the the, the design or, or the framing of all of the shots as I was so it was it was very much a group effort and and that meant that we came to some really interesting places that I definitely wouldn't have been able to access if I was if we were working in sort of like a more traditional hierarchical way. I have to say, I'm very grateful you didn't have to film in my house. It would have taken me three years to have tidied up to even let you through the front door. So uh, I I, as, as well as being intrigued by the story, I had serious house envy. Athena, I'm moving in, that's all I'm saying. Um, so um, Anthony, um, it must be really difficult when you don't have proper stage lighting to work out, or indeed screen lighting to work out how you light a piece like this. And it was very 
very beautifully lit. For those of you who haven't been able to see some of the other episodes, we saw one there, but all five episodes with very different lighting moods. How did you approach um, lighting something when you were working out of the actors' houses? Oh, you're, you're on, on, uh, mute, you're on mute, Anthony. Ant? There we are, that's better. There you go. Um, we only had one uh, light that was uh, not a practical light that existed in the home of both Evelyn and Adina. Um, so a lot of the tools we were using were like desk lamps and table lamps and windows, the sun. Uh, many times we were fighting with the sun going down, talking about what time is this shot? What time do we think this should be? Um, uh, and finding like quite nice moments in reflections on TVs, which were often very almost accidental. Um, but then that helped kind of um, build a texture that we were all quite happy with. Um, and then we used the film light we had. Um, it was just a small, relatively cheap light that we were able to fill in with. But we had to be quite delicate with it because when it, when it married in with the lights that we already had in the, the home, so like the pendants, table lamps, sometimes the film lamp jarred a bit and we felt it was too, it was too obvious and it was quite jarring. Um, so yeah, a lot of the tools we were sort of making up as we go along with what we had and closing windows, opening windows, uh, moving um, white pieces of cardboard around to reflect extra light into places when we need it. Um, yeah. Well, I think I think it was the gods uh, were just um, involved because I had a I had a table lamp on the other side of my screen which literally just blew. So I don't know what what you were saying there, Anne, but you you've totally ruined my, my table lamp. Thank you for that. Um, I, I hold you personally responsible. You clearly were in control of that. Um, I'm just about to ask Evelyn a question, and then I'm going to open it up to um, those of you who are I don't know whether you'd call you audience uh, people who are on this call. So so there is a, um, a little button at the bottom of the screen for those of you not used to using Zoom, which is called Q&A. And we're going to use that button to collect questions that you may have um, to ask of any of our panel today. Um, so if you have questions, I can see a couple of people have already put questions in. Put some questions in there. And then after I've asked Evelyn um, a question, um, I'll be coming to you. Um, so Evelyn, is it Evelyn or is it Evie? What do you prefer? Oh, Evie, please. Um, I Evie. always feel like I'm in trouble if I'm Evelyn. I always kind of feel like I've I've shuffled off some sort of coil and uh, I'm about to be cautioned very, very radically. But, but, yeah, I'll try not. I'll try not to make it look like I'm cautioning you. Um, the the creative team have talked a lot about some of the opportunities that were involved in working out of your and Athena's homes. Mm -hmm. What were the challenges for you um, filming something which was in your where you live? Um, I mean, it was it was a re it was a new landscape. It's sort of a new language and a new landscape because you you don't have a rehearsal room. You don't have um, you don't have a physical space where you can all come together. You're actually just working in your intimate home. And um, I think initially I just had a, a surge of, um, of interior decorating, um, like insecurity going, oh no, oh no, <laughs> look at that lamp and we'll have to, to get rid of this. And there's something really exposing about it, which is really interesting because it's something we started looking at different colors and um and how and i mean both i mean everyone collectively the team sort of beautifully created this landscape of a very stark contrast between one and a between their worlds and between what colors belong to either character and either woman but i think there's something really interesting about the intimacy that it exposed and it, i mean there was a momentary thing where i suddenly forgot why why it was so exposing and you're playing this such a a vulnerable and insecure and fragile person. And then I was suddenly wondering about, oh gosh, why do I feel so uncertain about these, these choices or these scenes? And then we're suddenly kind of going, that's because she's so uncertain and it's so exposing in, in, in an entirely different way. Well, I'd say both you and Athena did a beautiful job 
as actors it was it was it was fascinating to see I can't tell you how quickly I was drawn into the narrative um, of the piece um, I'm going to uh, now look like I'm very confused because I'm going to open the Q&A box which means like my eyes are going to be all over the place looking like I have no idea what I'm doing I kind of sort of do um, but yeah so forgive me if that's um, the case um, that's really interesting. OK, so I'm just going to take the questions broadly in the order in which I see them. If I miss a question, I don't hate you. Uh, it's just that I can't quite manage looking at the actors and the and the, and the crew at the same time as looking at the screen. So apologies. Um, the first question is a really interesting one. Um, I'm going to put this first to Lily, actually. Um, and the question is this. I thought the series was excellent. It's an anonymous attendee is asking this question, but uh, I'll share the question anyway. I thought the series was excellent. Well done. What was the thinking behind the shots looking, uh, the shots looking down on the performers that we see across the episodes? I found it very effective. Lily. Yeah. Well, I'm always incredibly interested in perspective and angles. And I think that across in theater and film and whatever we do. But um, I think in terms of this in particular, we found quite early on that, um, and this is obviously theater novices going into film in a way, uh, is that our, sh because we didn't have an, in a sort of edit in the way that you might normally have in a series so we were doing long one shots for the monologues and um we so almost like living portraits so sort of shifting into photography um or you know a living painting uh the shot the angle that we were choosing had a very felt like it had a very big dramaturgical part to it so it played a big sort of role in the narrative as well so uh, it basically, uh, we were interested in strange, odd angles and sort of uh, surprising angles and shots, but it was also about the more uh, out of control the characters became or in control the characters became, the more the angles would shift and the perspective would shift with the characters. So uh, especially the top shots uh, or the shots where they're on the wonk, uh, those are shots where or the character is sort of in this corner quite small that's when sort of the character is becoming more more le less in control of what the situation is happening and then the more they sort of shift into the into the center and the more they sort of become bigger in their image the more they're sort of in control that was sort of I think the sort of rule of thumb that we were sort of playing with that's really interesting. And if I get a chance, I've got a question about storytelling, which I might ask um, later, but I can see the questions from the audience are racking up and I'm going to put the next one to Athena. There is um, another question for Lily, but I want to make sure that we're, we're getting an even spread of who gets asked questions and gets a chance to um, say what they think. Um, uh, this, uh, this is from David Hunt, who is effusive in his uh, congratulations for your offie uh, for Scrounger. Uh, absolutely amazing and uh, who talks about the fact that he loved uh, watching the series um, uh, late night series um, so David's question is this knowing that this has been adapted for YouTube uh, do you intend to turn the play back into its unabridged version and return it to its original form so that hopefully we can see it in live theatre in the near future Athena thank you David for such a great question um I don't know. What do you think, guys? Um, and where is Neil McPherson and all, all this? Will he let us? Um, some stories I know right away I'm not done with. Even, I know, even when um, the curtain is closed. I don't, I mean, depending on the opportunity that is presented and if we think we have anything new and interesting to bring to it, sure, I would be interested, but I also, there's something quite wonderful about knowing you're done with this particular story and in fact really and I earlier today we're going 
what's next? I have an idea. Yeah, I think that will work. Let's try it. So. Oh, Athena, I'm intrigued. I want to know what the next idea is. That's fantastic. Don't keep us in suspense too long. Um, I've now got a question for Ant. Let me just pull it up so I can see this. So um, this is a question from Caroline. I'm I'm gonna I, I apologize if I pronounce your surname wrong. I think it's Steinbeis or Steinbees. Apologies, as I say, if I if I pronounce it incorrectly. So Ant, the question is this: the color palette. Um, oh no, is this a is this an Ant question or is it? Uh, it might be an Ant. Anna question. In fact, I might even ask Anna first and then see what um, uh, um, Ant has to say. Anna, the colour palette in this looks so wonderfully placed and in harmony. Wow, there you go. Success. Um, did you get lucky there <laughs> to try to find so many shots that chimed with each other? Oh, so this is actually to Anna and Lily. There you go. It's Sorry, Anna, I'll come back to you. It's a it's a really good question and in part it in part it is luck we when we started really investigating um athena's and um easy spaces we realized that they had like very different individual um uh, styles of, of decor um which was really really helpful and once we sort of took that as a framework uh we like we then kind of got more adapted at like dialing up the differences between them so I had fittings with Evie and we were just going through her wardrobe because that's also what we did you know we, we, we filmed it all in the actor's own clothes I think there were like a few pieces that we bought in but mainly it was out of out of Athena and Evie's wardrobes um, again generously donated to the cause and uh, and you know we'd be going through Evie's wardrobe and I'd be like no throw that out that's a that's an A colour that can't be a one colour no throw that out that's another A colour and vice versa with Athena as well and we you know I, I started certainly like to, being able to tune my eye to seeing certain things that were more and more in A's palette and more in one's palette and then removing those um uh so yeah it, it, it started off we started off lucky and then we got better at sort of manipulating that luck to sort of extend it aesthetically across the whole series and really lock in two very very different um, dynamics between them and that was also uh, like much further enhanced by the way that and lit both in terms of like which colours were sort of brought out or knocked back and also in the editing process by Lily who then applied filters and grades this is entirely new to me being a theatre person I was like grades you can totally change the colour of things <laughs> why, why does my job even exist um, and uh, so we it was kind of like something that we sort of locked in at each stage of the process further and further until we really did find that we got two very very different striking looks. I'm gonna do that taking power and control thing that hosts do at this point um, because I know that we've got a limited amount of time left and I want to get as many questions in as possible and as many of the panel in as possible to answer those questions so what I'm going to do is ask the panel I'm actually going to go to Lily with a different question uh, that was asked by an audience member and ask you to just provide quite brief answers so that we can get around as many questions as um, possible so uh, Lily um, a question Oh, hang on. I've pressed the wrong button. That didn't help. Um, let's try that button instead. Um, so this is from another anonymous attendee. Um, I have a question to director Lily McLeish about what it was like to work with the actors from a distance. Well, I mean, wonderful because they're absolutely wonderful actors, these two, but also uh, difficult because in a way, you, a lot of time in rehearsals I feel that a lot of um, subtle things happen in very small conversations in tea breaks or you know in little side conversations and what we found on zoom was that obviously everything is very full-on and anything you say is sort of quite full-on in a sort of very focused way on a zoom conversation so it was gorgeous and wonderful but at the same time sometimes I wished I could just be in a quiet corner with them just having a little subtle chat maybe even with not everyone listening or you know so I think you're then down to picking up the phone or you know having a little try and email or yeah 
Yeah, that's really, it is really interesting and it must be a real challenge um, for the actors as well. And in fact, my next question, I'm going to come to Evie. Um, so as a performer, so this is a question from Jonathan uh, Lovett. And the question is this, um, what are the, <laughs> I love the way Jonathan, you phrased this by the way, uh, what are the horrible pitfalls um, of performing <laughs> um, a show on Zoom? And did you ever find yourself, Evie, falling into into any of those pitfalls at, at any point and how did you climb out? Um, I mean I think to sort of in similar to, sort of in a similar vein as sort of Anna's touched on like it's um it's just a whole new framework and a whole different a wholly different language and I think that there were especially because we're was we filmed out of sequence and so yeah. obviously in a in and in filming you you might be doing that but it would be for much shorter scenes you know you might have um things done out of sequence that makes absolute sense but it might only be for a page or a couple of pages or so the idea of having it you know, two or three minutes where it's just you straight to camera and if you and if you momentarily forgot where you were or if something had been colored by the previous session so um I mean I remember we we had one sort of filming block um where we we went straight from one room into the next room to sort of to change where we were and we suddenly sort of scratched heads and went why is that weird and Lily just absolutely immediately and very accurately just went it's it's like you still like him but you but you don't it's um it's changed it's a different because we just suddenly we carried on the feeling from the previous from the previous mode into the next and we had to sort of shake it out physically shake it out and physically sort of try and alter it because because whereas you might sort of call a tea break in a rehearsal room or where you might go okay that's a bit weird that's gone a bit funny well we'll, we'll get back to that in a second it's in our own clothes in our own homes moving from one room to the next and so you don't have a clear division necessarily so you have to and collectively I think there was a wonderful and I'm very thankful for you know a team behind going this is working or this isn't because you had this sort of a group mentality to be able to go yes or no or and sort of it came, became a beautiful sort of brain speak of having to try and avoid those pitfalls together but I mean I hope we avoided them but <laughs> who knows at this stage Oh, I, I, certainly as the as the viewer, I think you more than avoided them. I wouldn't have even known what they were. Um, I'm going to call a host privilege and ask Anthony a question, if I may. Um, Lily talked earlier about how things, um, as the series progressed, you were looking at kind of different shots and angles and getting closer to the face and all of that kind of thing that you did. What challenges, what, what did you do, I should say, in order to create the mood shifts um, through lighting going through um as, as the series progressed i think we um after our first few sessions we discovered what things were working quite well and what things um not not that they were not working well but um could be working better um so we discovered like a set of tools that we could then uh, reuse and when we needed to go somewhere slightly different we were able to very often bring out our special film light, turn off all of the standard domestic things um, and then play with that and try and create textures with that in the space that we had. Um, yeah. No, it, it was it was very, very effective. Um, I have to say it was a really impressive piece, part of the piece. Um, I'm going to ask um, one more question from the audience. Sadly, we are running out of time. I'm very sad. Um, so this is, well, actually, um, uh, Emmanuel Alia has three questions. I'm going to just pick one in the interests of time. Um, and I'm going to um, uh, direct this to Athena. Um, so this particular question, Question, Athena is this um, what were the challenges of writing for this medium if any and I know you were saying you've done a lot of work online but tell us about the challenges well I'm going to disappoint you in that it was written before we knew we were doing it this way um, and in that regard I went Hey, I've got the script. What if we did it online? But to that end, 
I think the challenges of writing the script all together period um, were writing a feminist script about um, a triangular situation where the two women refuse to play the cliches of getting into a cat fight where the two women were absolutely equal down to the word count. I wanted to make sure that these women were very, very different, but yet equally magnanimous in their own style. And the challenge of going, yes, this is a new story that we don't talk about. And I don't care if the guy isn't fleshed out. It's not about him. It's about these two women and them going on a journey that we don't typically see with the male gaze of mainstream media. I have to say that was the thing I loved the most about the series because when you think about what it might be before you've seen any of it you expect it to be about the things that you absolutely avoided and I think it's what makes it such a powerful powerful piece um we're running out of time rapidly so I've got um, a final question which I'm going to ask of everybody and I'm just going to go around in the order in which I see you on the screen so Lily would be first and then um Anna and the question is this same question for you all um 2020 was a, an unusual year um, and a uh, you know, slight thing of global pandemic. Um, in the filming of this series, what was your most 2020 moment um, that you experienced in filming this series? So I'm going to start with Lily and then go to Anna. Okay, I'm going to say one that I hope, be there's two, and I hope the other, someone else is going to mention the other one. So I'm going to go with the other one. Uh, so one of my favorite moments was when uh, we were on, uh, we were shooting uh, Athena on the living room floor. It was a wide shot, uh, quite late, early morning, I think it was, or later in the evening, it was sort of quite dusk. And Ant was uh, lighting Athena with his uh, special light that he was talking about. And uh, I couldn't see him, but the one of the cameras, one of the laptops got moved on Zoom so that I could suddenly, it swiveled around so I could see him as well. And I had a shot of Athena doing her beautiful acting on one side. And then I could see Ant lying on the floor, basically mirroring what Athena was doing with his face mask on and the light and just sort of stuck in a corner doing the same thing. And it was absolutely wonderful. I thought it was a very, you know, a good moment. Oh, I tell you, I hope you, you captured a picture of that. That sounds that sounds a fantastic moment. Um, Anna, and then I'll come to Evie. Mine has to be that we did quite a lot of late night or late evening shoots, a lot of which would like run for like a very long time. And on one, um, my my partner was just heading into the other room and he was like, and um, convinced I was on mute. I was like, oh, this is not going to be tonic. <laughs> Round the computer, I had Lily go, Oh, well, we'd all love a gin and tonic, Anna. <laughs> and was like, yeah, if you're making, I'd love one too. So yeah, that was, uh, yes, yeah, lessons in muting. I have to say mine would have been a margarita, but hey, each, each to their own. Um, Evie and then Ant. Um, I think it's been, honestly, I think it's the physical contortions that poor Ant had to get into and out of for, for setting up the shot, because obviously, especially from a height, because anything when, oh, there's so many beautiful shots where it's from a height or it's perched on a particular ledge or shelf. And some of them he could sort of press and then disappear out of it. But some of them he couldn't. So he'd have to sort of press record and then extricate himself out and then sort of you could hear him take this big giant <gasps> breath inside his mask to sort of make sure that he couldn't be heard <laughs> whilst we were recording it so it was this that he was sort of master the hilt and like and then trying to stay as far away from me as possible and not make a sound throughout the entire shift um but also I mean in a, in a more general sense it like 
I've actually just loved that. Yes, we haven't all been in the same room, but it's felt like we have because everyone's just been extremely warm and generous and willing to this strange, beautiful, wonderful, strange thing. And so it's been that, yeah, both of those and being suffocated and everyone's collective warmth are my highlights. Well, my admiration for Evie and Athena as the performers was already pretty high, but how you didn't spend the entire um, series just corpsing. Um, in fact, if there are those kind of like, if there's those blooper things, we need to see the blooper things as well of you, you, you both corpsing all the way through it. And, and then I'll give the final word to Athena. Uh, so um, in many of the shots, we ended up balancing the iPad on whatever we could find um, around the room. Sometimes that was sensible, like a pile of books. But there's one shot of Athena in the, on the stairs. The iPad is supported by a small tower of toilet rolls. Uh, yeah, that's definitely the most. Uh, we have the photo to prove it. Oh, that's brilliant. That has to be, that has to, oh, I, I have to see that photo. I insist, I insist. And then the final word to Athena. Yeah, I think poor Neil at the Zimmer would get these outtakes and these photos and just, I'm just on some level, he was just going, what the hell did I sign up for? But my favorite moment was we obviously had this filming kit that included the iPad and the light and odds and ends charges that would go in a bag and it would go from my place to Evie's place. Um, and Evie came around to deliver the kit back to mine and she said um i'm going to bring it up in the lift and now and i thought okay great well that means that i need to go and get it from in the hallway because she isn't allowed in here and she doesn't want to breathe in me and I know that she's got her own concerns. So I was picturing this checkpoint Charlie situation where Evie would leave it in the middle of the hall and walk away and I would come get it. And then Evie didn't come and didn't come and didn't come. And finally I went over to the lift and I saw that the lift was on my floor and I hit the button and the doors opened and there was the iPad <laughs> and the light and everything else on the floor of the list and he, he's on the phone going did you get it did you get it and i'm going yeah this is the most 2020 moment that i have ever had so Oh, it's a brilliant place to end. Um, and I've got that picture very clearly in my head, Athena. Um, just wanted to say a big, big thank you to the panel um, uh, for all your answers. It's such a fascinating project. And uh, if you, if those of you haven't seen more than episode one, I highly recommend that you see the rest of the series. It's, it's an intriguing, intriguing piece. Um, so um, huge apologies if you put a question in the Q&A and I wasn't able to get to you. Time was against us. We probably could have done two hours rather than just the one that we had. Um, so thank you to all of you that have turned up uh, as well. Um, thank you very much to the panel. Um, and um, thank you from me for being such a lovely bunch. And I'm going to hand you back to Sarah Laurie. Thank you and goodbye. Keep your um, cameras on just a little. Just because I that in the chat. Um, feel that, uh, yeah. Um, People want to know more about Dagny. Uh, I think it's the vibe from the chat. Uh, what about the cat? Exclamation mark. The cat should have got a credit. <laughs> he needs just to cover that off. Before we... <laughs> Noted. Yeah. Um, and whilst 
we wait for Dagny. Um, there was just a question, I don't know if it got missed, I thought it was quite an interesting one about this sort of snakes and ladders, the metaphor of the stairs, the sort of Oh, yes, you're right. I thought we were running out of time, but I think we do have time. Uh, let me just see if I can find that question. Well spotted, because it was a great one. So this was from another anonymous attendee. Um, and um, I think this is probably for Lily and Anna, or there might be others might want to answer this question as well. Uh, so the question is this, is the use of stairs in various episodes symbolic in any way, like snakes and ladders? I mean, I love the, I love the interpretation. It was not as, I'm going to be really honest, it was not as intentional as that. It was literally that um, the, the stairs was a feature and we absolutely loved it. We loved the angles that we got from it. We loved the, uh, the banisters, the sort of, you know, the way we could sort of get Athena behind it as if she was locked in something. So there was a lot of sort of playing around with that, um, with the banisters and you know with that depth of, and the focus of where we could sort of end our characters uh, but i love the interpretation of it things great yes we definitely meant that i was gonna say claim it claim it <laughs> and what do you think so sasha, my um amazing colleague sasha is uh is pressing up the button um she's put uh quite a few um like our hashtags and our handles relevant links into the chat um, you can email Sasha if you want access to the active or you know, to interview them or um, if you have questions, if you want some more press stills, anything and everything. We've also got um, Flavia Fraser for Canon, our press rep. Um, you can contact her via us. Um, and then I think once we wrap up, the last thing you'll see, we're going to play out with our music. Um, Julian just needs one more name check for the amazing sound design thing. Um, so we've got a sort of like a, a, a sort of end uh, credits, which again has our hashtags and handles there for you. So you, you in no hurry to leave if you want to take the links out of the chat for the playlist. Thank you, Travani. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Um, yeah, can't wait to see you all in our projects. Um, yeah, Sasha, I think it's time to roll. Maybe we have to turn it off. I think she's going to screen share. Thank you.